this is part two for the HO model. So we started in autarky. We're going to pick right up where we left off from before. We get this point right here. That's the optimal combination of apples and oranges for home. So if home's in autarky, they're going to make and consume this many oranges, and then they're going to make and consume this many apples. There's my dog. And then Rose going to make and consume this many oranges and make and consume this many apples. They're going to eat whatever they make because they can't engage in trade. Let's make that go away now. So we wind up seeing a price line like this in home and a price line like this in row, right? It's much flatter in row and that suggests apples are cheap and that should make sense to you because they make a lot of apples. They're good at it. It's cold up there and don't bump that buoy. And home has a lot of oranges. They're good at that. So oranges are cheap, but apples are expensive. And that's why you get the steep slope on that price line. Well, somebody's going to figure that out and engage in trade. And when they do, the law of one price is going to tell us that these prices converge. Okay? So now pay attention because this is the key part of this model. And I think this is a part where people get uh, stumped or tripped up. So you wind up with this price line, right? And then you get this price line here. Prices are different, but when apples start flowing in this direction and oranges start flowing in this direction well expensive oranges that are now brought over here from home they were expensive in a row before the price starts falling because more oranges come over here and then similarly apples are expensive here but when apples from rows start flowing in this direction well supply goes up and apple prices fall over here and when that happens these two price lines converge right so you wind up with that and they get the same angle okay and the way you do that and there's no good way to explain this other than to say that the line rolls across the top of the production possibility curve. So I'm going to put a new price line like that. All right? And I'm going to call that PLT. That's PLT in trade. And then I'm going to try to make a similar line, a similar slope here. So this one then rolls down the production possibility curve. I just catch there, right? And it should be the same slope as this. I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to do that or not, but it's going to look something like that, right? And that's going to be PLT star. So now, the law of one price, those aren't even close, but pretend the slope there and the slope there are the same. And if that's true, now prices have converged. The law of one price gives us the same price for both of these things, whatever the price is for that. Here's the neat part, though. If that's true and this is your price line, you no longer are constrained by this indifference curve. You can catch the next indifference curve, and that indifference curve is out here, right? I1, and they can catch the next indifference curve, and that one is I1 star. So then they start operating at this particular point, and they start operating at this particular point. They escape the production possibility curve, and of course, who doesn't want to do that? And then from there, we can look at the trade triangle and figure out what everybody's making, because what winds up happening is this dot breaks in half, okay? Half of it moves out to here, and the other half of it moves over here, because this dot was production and consumption. Well, now, looking at production, we refer to the production possibility curve. They don't operate at this point anymore. They operate at this point, where the new price line, PLT, is tangent to the production possibility curve. That's this point. And then they produce that many oranges. Remember, before, they were producing this many oranges. They produce more oranges, and that should make sense to you. They are making more of what they're good at. It's their comparative advantage. They're producing the goods in which they have a comparative advantage, and they are producing this many apples. They were producing this many apples, and that's moved in. They're making fewer apples. Well, no wonder they're making fewer apples. They're terrible at it, right? Look at that production possibility curve. Meanwhile, they are consuming. The indifference curve shows us what your, what your bundle is, what you're consuming. They're consuming this many oranges, and they are consuming this many apples. And if that's true, well then, what's happening here? That is their export of oranges, and that is their import of apples. So they're trading that many oranges for that many apples. And they're happier because of it, because they're on a new difference curve, I1. And we can agree that any point on I1 is better than any point on I0. And from that, we can get the trade triangle. So the trade triangle is going to be that right angle that you drew right there when you did these dotted lines for consumption and production. And so I'll, I'll highlight those. And then the hypotenuse is the PLT, so price line and trade. So it's going to be that right there is the trade triangle. You do all that on a final exam, 
and you are rocking it. You're going to do really well. And then the same thing's going on here. So these guys no longer operate at this point. They slide out to there. That's where PLT is tangent to the production possibility curve. They're now making production of Apple Star, that many apples, and they're making production of Orange Star. They're making that many oranges. Meanwhile, they are consuming, that's the indifference curve, right? They're consuming that many apples, and they are consuming that many oranges, CO star. So where's the extra coming from? Well, if they're making that many apples and they're only consuming that many, then they are exporting those, okay? That's that. If I did this to scale, then that would be the same distance as that. Good luck pulling that off. And then here, and I've clogged this thing up a little bit, but this difference right here, if they're consuming that many oranges, but they're only making that many oranges, then that's import of oranges, right? And that should be the same as that, export of oranges. So then that gives us our trade triangle. Find that right angle right there that you drew the dotted lines, and then you can highlight this, and your hypotenuse again is PLT, not PLA, but PLT, right? I've labeled it up there, and then you shade that in, and that's your new tri trade triangle, and it's not going to work, I don't think. It looks pretty decent, but I don't think it's going to work every time you do it for sure. This triangle and this triangle should have the exact same area. Why? Because that's export of apples, well, that's import of apples, and that's import of oranges, and that's export of oranges. It's the same goods moving back and forth. So that's the trade triangle, and that's how you show trade in the HO model. We got differences in endowment, and that causes differences in price. Somebody engages in arbitrage, starts bringing goods back and forth. The law of one price causes those to converge, those prices, and PLA, which is steep here and flat here, winds up converging to the same point or the same slope and you roll across the production possibility curves, that allows you to reach out and grab a higher indifference curve. And who doesn't want to be on a higher indifference curve?